Good morning. We welcome you to Wesley Chapel United Methodist Church on this fifth Sunday of Pentecost. We're excited that you are worshiping with us today. It's good to have you. Our call to worship this morning is from Psalm 147, verses 1 through 11 and 20. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the outcasts of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars. He gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord and abundant in power. His understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden. He casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. God of all power, you are the one who called this world into being. We acknowledge that you have no equal in the extent of your power. Yet you want to share your power. You want to share your strength with those who are powerless. You ache to heal the brokenhearted, to bind up the wounds of the lost and rejected folk of this world. Radical love, and it leaves us speechless. But you gave it human form in the shape of a person, Jesus, in whom your promises of healing and empowerment were fulfilled. We give you thanks and praise for blessing our lives in this way. And we pray that in Jesus, and through the power of the Holy Spirit, we too can become radical lovers of the powerless and passionate bearers of hope to those whose lives are filled with despair and hopelessness. As we worship together this hour, this day, may our worship be a true expression of our desire to praise and glorify you, O oh God, for the many ways in which you bless us. And may our lives reveal our gratitude in all we think, in all we do, and in all we say. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our gospel lesson comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 39. It's a continuation of the scripture from last week. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown, they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons. And the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, he got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Last week we read the scripture, the previous ten verses, before uh, the one that we read today. This was the first account of Jesus casting out demons. We might say the first exorcism. And now he moves on and he begins to heal and continue to cast out demons. In this first century world of Jesus, sick people only had a few options. The first thing they could do was try a uh, home remedy, a folk remedy. And these varied from sensible potions and poultices to uh, absolutely dangerous fixes. Many of these remedies are still practiced today. In the industrialized world, and most are completely ineffective, especially with serious diseases and injuries. The second thing a person could do was this. If they had the means, they could pay a physician. This was costly and was not much more effective than the folk remedies. Most Greek physicians in the first century followed the teachings of Hippocrates, who is best known for his Hippocratic Oath. His famous oath, Hippocrates codified the principles of humorism. Humorism now is a belief that human health is defined as a perfect balance between four fluids or humors. Now this was holistic medicine. In that, it saw the need for balance. Balance between the uh, mental and physical. But the interventions by physicians often involved bleeding and draining of fluids, which would regularly result in a worsening condition. Now, treatment was expensive, and few people had the means for this, so it was only accessible to those who had great privilege. Another option for sick people in Jesus' world was one of many religious healing practices. Every ancient religion had extensive healings. Ways of healing, teachings of, teaching on healing. But there was a charge for this also, most of the time. Most of it cost money. With these limited and ineffective options, sickness in the ancient world changed a person's identity. Sick people would stand out in a village. They were often visibly scrutinized. They were marked. They were scarred. Lepers were required to announce they're coming by shouting or ringing bells. Most sick people uh, became beggars. They were poor. They were wholly dependent on their family members for food, for shelter, for other necessary needs. Being labeled a sick, a sick person led to a very low status in society. The identity of a sick person in Jesus' day also carried with it a stigma of God's judgment. Now Jesus came to set this straight. In this society, most illnesses were linked to sin or indiscretion or, or uh, some horrible uh, thing that had happened rather than to a scientific cause. In Jesus' ministry, he confronted some of those beliefs and he was out to set those straight. These beliefs were widespread. 
And I think Jesus was putting emphasis just on how widespread those beliefs were. The sick person in our gospel reading today is Peter's mother-in-law, Simon Peter's mother-in-law. She has a fever, a bad fever. She is weak. She cannot get up. She is on her sick bed. Now, in today's world, her condition would probably not be that serious. But in those days, it was very serious. Her condition had concerned the disciples. And so Jesus is asked to come in and see her. And they usher him into the room. Perhaps it would just be a minor thing in our day, but it certainly wasn't in the day of Jesus. It was an emergency. It was a big thing. It was very serious. Jesus touches her hand with his hand. There's that touch, that touch that we see all the time in Jesus' ministry over and over and over again. She rises up at once and the fever leaves her. It's not a very dramatic scene. There isn't any music. There isn't any fanfare. There aren't any spells or incantations. There's only the touch of the master's hand. There is a touch of another hand, the hand of Jesus reaching out to Peter's mother-in-law, the sick woman. And immediately the scripture says she began to serve them. She now has the strength to offer the custom customary hospitality to her guest. Her identity is no longer that of a bedridden, fever-ridden person, but a gracious host to a visiting teacher and his disciples. And then everything just goes kind of crazy. A horde of people come Sick people, demonized people, injured people, people with all types of afflictions, and they swarm Jesus, begging for healing. What we saw happen to Simon Peter's mother-in-law, we see happen to multitudes now from the village. Jesus simply reached out his hand to the sick woman. And now he reaches out to the multitude just as he reached out his hand to Peter's mother-in-law. He continues to reach out to us today. Jesus is here for you, to heal you, to make you whole. Jesus is here to restore you to the community you lost. Jesus is here to restore you to a place of service in the community so you can find dignity and purpose again. That's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus does. He brings people back to wholeness and health. Jesus can do that for you. Jesus Christ can bring you back to wholeness and health if you will only take his hand, if you will only feel his touch. Now all this healing takes a toll on Jesus. Jesus was fully divine but also fully human. And in the humanity of Jesus, he has worked for a long time. And he pulls away to pray. He disappears into the dark to pray. If you'll notice, Jesus often pulls away to pray.
Well, we're seldom told the context of his prayers. They seem, they seem uh, to be a conversation between a beloved son and his father. Intimate dialogue. They seem incomprehensible to the disciples and to us. The only time we know the content of Jesus' prayer, Jesus' private nighttime prayer, is in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night in which he was betrayed. On that night, he strained, he writhed under the pressure and weight of the world. Under the calling that had been placed upon him as the Son of God. He pleaded for the cup to pass from him even as he accepted God's will for his life. The glimpse of Jesus' prayer life was not identical to what we had seen before. We know Jesus prayed for hours in the dark, but we can be sure every time it was intense. Jesus' sense of mission empowered him to do the work of God that God had called him to do. When he was exhausted, he withdrew. He prayed. But he came back. He came back every time refreshed and renewed. Perhaps we do not need so much rest but we do need renewal and refreshment we need to be renewed and refreshed in our sense of mission and calling by God maybe more people would experience wholeness and healing if we spent more time on our knees with Almighty God. That's where Jesus found strength. And that's what we're called to do today. With all the Christian saints through the ages, we are called to withdraw, to find comfort, Find time alone with God to be renewed and refreshed. Jesus Christ is still reaching out to us today. Jesus Christ is still reaching out to us this very day, calling us to a life filled with service and community. Jesus is praying for us. Jesus is praying for us so that we might have the strength to go into the dark with God, wrestle with our calling, wrestle with our mission, but we don't go alone. Jesus Christ is with us. He goes before us into the world because God loves us so much. Amen. Let us pray. All of us are being sent into the world in need of healing. We have been given all that we need to be God's messengers of peace. As you go forth now into the world, Rejoice in God's presence. The power of the Holy Spirit is with you. Bring the good news of peace and hope to all that you meet in this world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.